G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in today. It's got a lovely Melbourne weather day here in Brisbane. So gonna use this uh, rainy old Queen's birthday weekend to get some maintenance done on the old BA. So we'll be ripping into a bunch of stuff today and they're possibly coming back tomorrow, do some more. Yeah, I'll show you what I bought over the last few weeks. Just a couple of maintenance items, that sort of stuff. Get the car sort of running a little bit healthier and uh, a bit safer to be on the road. So uh, yeah, we'll rip into it now. So I've been collecting parts over the last couple of weeks. Um, still got more stuff to buy for some more future videos, but uh, and got some parts here that are for future videos. But uh, for today, we're going to be ripping into a new driver's window rig, bonnet struts, boot struts, new side markers. Going to be building a dose pipe setup, and going to be fixing my back right-hand door. Um, so when I first got the car, this external door handle didn't work. Then while we're cleaning it, I think we've flicked the child lock on. So uh, the door does not operate at the moment. So we're gonna have to get the, uh, the, the car stealing kit out and bust that open. Um, whether I either go through the through the window channel here or or uh, put a you know airbag in here and pull the door apart and get a, a rod or something in there and flick the child lock off. Open it from the inside handle. Um, not really sure which way that'll go yet, but we'll rip into it. Yes, yeah, so I've also got a uh, auto service kit bonnet cable. I'm still waiting on a fuse box, so I'm gonna order one from Ford this week. Uh, I've got a throttle body gasket, inlet manifold gasket, oil fuel filters, and new overflow tank. So we're gonna do all the oils and everything next weekend, um, possibly tomorrow even. And um, there'll be another video later doing the bonnet cable, fuse box, ball joints, all that sort of stuff. Uh, so gonna have a few maintenance related videos coming up on the car. And um, that'd be good for everyone that doesn't really know how to do these sort of things. And can, a lot of this can be done at home. Um, you don't have to go to a mechanic, so I'll show you how to do it all. And uh, I'm gonna tackle the door first, I think. It's been annoying me for the longest. So the way this child lock works is when it's down, the inner door handle works. When it's up, the inner door handle obviously doesn't work. So I have to somehow manage to get that flicked up. Now the problem with that is once it's shut, you have to come all that way from the outside. So I think our best bet is coming from the inside of the car, going that way to it. But this piece, this piece here kind of butts up to here. So I think if I pull the bolster out, pull the seal back, I might be able to just get something in and flick it. So you wanna get your hand to get the back seat out, get your hand under the front, push backwards and then up, and backwards and up. The old back seat pops out. Obviously, if you're doing a fuel fuel pump, that's where you access it there. But I'm just trying to get this door open. So I've already released the clip here, and I'll explain how it works outside of the car because it's not something I can show while it's together. So once that bolster's out, so basically that's broken. That wasn't in there properly. And this, you have to push that down to get that out. So you can yoink it, but it's very hard. So you basically push like a, a screwdriver in there to poke that down, then pull it out. We're not seeming to have any luck here. What I'm doing is destroying my roof lining even more, which is also gonna get replaced at some point. There we go. So I was basically just feeding that down. Scratched the shit out of my door, but didn't have to drill any holes in anything or who really cares about that, you know? This thing, uh, <laughs> the paint on this thing, who cares? Anyway, so now we make sure that that never gets put back down. So I'll pull this door trim off today and see if we can get that external handle working too. There's a rod in the glove box, so I'm guessing something's missing. So side note, if you actually care about your car, use something plastic so you don't scratch the shit out of the paint. I don't really care, so yeah, I just got really annoyed having to, every time I want to put something in the back seat, I'd have to go all the way around to the other side of the car, so no, I don't. Just gonna rip this door trim off. One screw here. Don't be alarmed if my drill starts smoking. It has a habit of doing that. 
it's uh, on its last days. A couple of holes, screws in the bottom. Oh, helps if you got it in the screw. Oh, she definitely just changed gears or something. One more down here. Flick this little guy out of there. Then there's a screw behind that. And you flick this trim out. There's another screw, I think, here and here. Then there's one more up there, which was already partially removed for some reason. You need quite a long drill bit to actually get into this one. You know, like it's pretty far in there. Feel around. There we go. And it comes. Now, once you get this, um, once you get this one out, you gotta remove the rod from the handle, which is pretty easy. Just chuck the screw aside. Just pull on it, just flick that out of there. And that comes out of there. That, you know, that doesn't fall anywhere, you can always grab that. It's actually how you change these. You can buy chrome ones of these, or you used to be able to. Back in the day, you could buy chrome ones. So, good upgrade. And then basically, to remove the door trim, grab the bottom, pull. Off she comes, undo your window switch. These break all the time, but they're not too bad. See like that, they bust out. All oh, the bottom ones are missing. Pull this dog off. Get that out of the way. Yep, just as I thought, we got a rod missing, so that, that handle's not attached to anything. So I'll see if that rod that's in the glove box fits. So, now that I've got a torch in here, not just using my phone, this rod, that end goes in there, and then that locks it on, and then this end has to go up, you know, that slot there, which will how to pull that down and open the door actuator. So I'm not gonna be able to film while I'm fitting it because my hand barely fits in there, but I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. So top bit's in, then just gotta hook that bit in. That goes on there. That locks onto the handle. And now, if you pull that handle, Okay, all right, now pull it. We now have a working door. Before we go putting everything back together, we'll give it a proper test. Crisp, crisp AF, bloody beauty, witchcraft. So I've ever put that door actuator in because it's clearly got an aftermarket one, like a wreckers one, but to put that rod in. So it's pretty basic, guys, I mean, Next up, gonna do the uh, window rig. Goes down fine, but on the way up. So something's stripped out, most likely the gear. You give it a bit of help, it can keep going, but just fails again straight away. So something's obviously gone wrong with that. So we'll uh, get that swapped out. And obviously removing this door trim is pretty much like for like exactly the same as the back. So I'm not gonna show that as well. Once it's detached from these, that's actually, I just stick some, you know, pick in there and a bit of cardboard in there and that's, you know, like my hands are slipping on that window more than they're wanting to pull it down. So then, yeah, window rig's pretty free to do whatever. So we'll unbolt it and see what we're looking with. Should be these four 10 mil bolts, I think, for the rig, for the, rod the, the guide and then the three for the motor and the power cable and that should all feed out now 
I haven't done one of these in 10 years at least. So if I'm doing anything wrong in my how-to guide, maybe watch a different how-to guide, but pretty sure I remember how these work. Pretty basic. It's a bit of blue Loctite on those. So if you're using hand tools, they are a little bit tight to pull out. But we're not using hand tools, so. The old Milwaukee big banana hammock gets through them. All right, that feels still attached somehow. What do we got going on here? Oh, it's just stuck up on the back side of the window. Basically, just feed it out one of the holes. So, given that cable looks good, oh, there we go. So that's broken. So that'll just be slipping. The motor won't be meshing properly with that spline in there and that'll just be jumping around. So you probably could actually weld those back together and get them going again, but Arvin Merida, I don't know if that's a genuine one or not. Could be, I can't remember what they look like. I thought they had a Ford logo on them, but maybe not. So this is the new one. I don't know if that's there as a brace. Considering it basically snaps off flush, I don't think that matters, but anyway, this should go in pretty simply. Obviously the uh, refitting is pretty much the opposite. The only part you'll run into trouble with, I think, is if you get that on the wrong side of the glass, it can be a pain. That's got to sit on this side of the glass. So like you feed it all in. You can run into trouble with if you end up with that on the outside of the glass, then the glass can't go down to the right spot. One eternity later. Pull your trucks out and bring your glass down slowly and squarely. Make sure nothing's going to hit it. And you just want to line up these with your clips on your glass. You basically just push them on. One of the most annoying parts of this car was these uh, gas struts. Uh, absolutely f So the bonnet likes to just fall down on its own randomly when you're trying to work on the car. So I do have clamps that you know clamp them up, but it's not really a solution. It's just a band-aid. So first step is uh, to change these out. You just want to flick that little dog out from there. Using YouTube magic, I have a second person holding the bonnet. So you just want to flick that dog right off using just a little flat blade screwdriver like so. And then at the bottom, you do the same. This autofocus really sucks. So once you got that one off, once your clips are off, you know, pretty simple, pull the clips off. And you just uh, want you get your handy helper, Evil Hawk, to uh, lift the bonnet higher. Rip, rip. And then your new one, twist it to make sure it lines up. Snap that end on. Snap that end on. 
Done. So I see. Obviously the boot is the same as the bonnet, it's just a little bit shorter strut. Just ignore my uh, little bit of rust here. So next up, some new side markers to go well with this nice, uh, no, no shiny paint. You know, bling it out. So obviously you look at your side marker, that's your side with the thing you need to compress, you know, to pull it out. You don't go prying at this side, you go prying at this side. Get a plastic tool so you don't scratch your paint like I already attempted to with my screwdriver earlier. You want to just feed that in, find that tab, push it, out it comes. Not a whole lot of uh, length on these. Um, now, because I already know that this globe's no good, all the, all the orange is coming off it, I'll go get another one and we'll put a new one in it while it's out. And have a handy dandy uh, light bulb organizer. Then uh, you probably go to Burson's or somewhere and get yourself some globes, but I have the luxury of having some globes at the ready. So then, uh, yeah, obviously, once you've got your new handy dandy bulb, click it in. Oh, that's in backwards. Oh no, we've, we've ruined everything. Hang on, what have I done wrong here? No, that wasn't the right way. Do that dog up. Boom. Alright, so this is this is how it doses currently. We're gonna get the uh, bento spec ghost pipe fitted up and see how that sounds. I'm gonna use this factory forward rubber. I wasn't sure what condition it was in. It's actually not too bad. It fits really quite well on the turbo, so I'll use it to hold the dose pipe. Um, I did get a silicon joiner, but I think I'll use the factory forward piece. I've actually got two options for the dose pipe. I've used both options in the past. This one gives you a traditional VL turbo. These generally give you more of a shoo shoo shoo. So what I'll end up doing is I'll whack this one on first. We'll do a sound clip of that one because it's real easy to fit. They're a much tighter bend, you know, they fit a lot better. And then um, we'll modify this pipe and get it all fitted in and, and I'll see what that one sounds like. We're dealing with highly advanced technology, dosing technology here, guys. Well, look, it's not really fitting too great. It's not the pipe on it is anyway, so I'll just I'll just do a dodgy on it. So, once the pod's fitted to the dose pipe, then feed it into the intake pipe. Obviously, it's not ideal. I mean, it's nearly touching the header there, but I don't really care. Dose pipe option one. That's our first option. It's more of a whooshy noise. We'll build the other one and we'll show you that. So, if we shorten that, it'll fit in better, but we might want the length of that for the pod to fit on. And we may want to cut that here. So I think what, from memory, you cut them down the middle and that part goes into the turbo because it's a tighter bend. Pulls it up closer to the... I think I'll go just before halfway. 
which should get it a bit of bend back so the pod can clear the power steering. Yeah, it's going to sound pretty good. Alright, so this is the uh, optimum material for dose pipes, so we'll have a listen to what this one sounds like. There you have it guys, so I uh, got all a lot of those uh, little mechanical niggly little things fixed today, you know, like the, the door that didn't open, the window that didn't close, all the uh, dose pipe, the turbo that didn't dose, so I uh, got a bunch of that sort of stuff fitted out today, which is great, so um, thanks for watching guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, follow for more content, next video will probably be doing all the oils, engine, gearbox, transmission, uh, diff, uh, power steering, Get all of that swapped out, swap that exhaust rubber with that hose clamp, that dodgy hose clamp, swap that out for a new rubber and um, do some other stuff. And yeah, so next video should be pretty exciting. Uh, get that one done uh, either tomorrow or next weekend and uh, yeah, we'll see you then. So thanks again, guys. Catch you on the next video.